Hi, I'm Stacy Reed, bringing you this Butterscotch.com video tutorial about image compression. Understanding image compression is really just a matter of thinking in numbers. The number of bits that are stored and the number of pixels that make up the image are both key factors. An uncompressed image with a resolution of 640 by 480 has 307,200 pixels total. A true color image of that size would take about one megabyte of storage space, considering that each pixel uses three bytes. Now the file size increases with the image resolution, so let's say that we have a true color image that's 1024 by 768. It's going to take about 2.5 megabytes of storage space. Now imagine that you have a few of these 2.5 megabyte files on your server and they're being downloaded by everyone who visits your website. You would probably use up a lot of bandwidth very quickly. Thankfully though, we can compress image data to make the file size smaller while retaining the height and width dimensions of the image. We're using IrfanView, but there are a lot of programs that can convert and compress your images with ease. In fact, most image editors can do so. Also, most digital cameras nowadays compress your images automatically, so you can store more images on your camera and then move them to your computer much quicker. When you compress an image, it's done in one of two formats either lossless or lossy. Think of it in terms of data loss. Lossy files lose data and lossless files retain the data. Allow me to explain a little further. Lossless formats like TIFF, Bitmap, and Ping use algorithms that save the image with maximum image quality. Unfortunately, the compression ratios are quite a bit weaker than lossy formats, so the end result is a larger file, but the quality is going to be well preserved. That's why images that will be printed are usually saved with lossless compression because the integrity of that image is much more important than, say, displaying it on an internet site. Lossy formats, like JPEG, discard information when they're saved. The amount of information that gets discarded directly influences the size of the file. It's also important to note that when you save a lossy file, you can never go back to the previous state. Each time the file is opened and saved as a JPEG, it's going to lose more and more data, which will cause the image to become pixelated over time. The reason for this is that pixel data is trashed during compression, so when the image is reopened, the computer fills in the missing data by borrowing from neighboring pixels. So looking at these images as an example, you can see the visual artifacting occurring most in the image that has been saved with the highest compression. You may hear of this being referred to as pixelation. So basically, you kind of have to choose between either compromising your file size or compromising file quality when you're choosing image compression. If the file is to be placed on your website, consider how often people will download the file and how much strain that's going to put on your bandwidth allowance. But if a file is too large, it could take longer for your web page to load, and most people won't stick around to see it. When in doubt, choose a compression ratio that's somewhere in the middle and save it as a new file. You can always open it and see how it looks, and if you don't like it, open the original file again and compress it until you get it just right. So now you know a little bit more about lossy and lossless images and the basics of image compression. This is Stacy Reed with Butterscotch.com, signing out. Bye for now!